Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, this is what nature might look like in our romantic worldview. Deer fleeing in the mist early morning, a little bit scared of us. So I was a little bit surprised when a couple of years ago, over here, letter A, in the middle of the center of Minneapolis, I walked into a grazing deer, middle of the day, uh, in a small park. People stood and stared, watching the deer. Uh, I, I remember a small dog also going to the deer, sniffing, looking, that's a really big dog and a, and a strange one. And everybody was looking like they've never seen such a thing before. The same surprise had my brother a couple of months ago when he took this photograph on a, the, uh, the parking lot of the business area he works on his office. Um, well, you might think he uh, works somewhere out there in the country, but that's not the case. He works on a business area next to a highway in the middle of Delft, in one of the most densely populated regions in Europe. Nowadays, in London, there are more foxes living in the city than in the countryside surrounding the city. And this is a, 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 a picture, another picture of animals who are really enjoying uh, being with us, um, the nightlife of the wild boars in our gardens. Uh, to, nowadays, in Berlin, thousands of wild boars are living there. Um, our man-made ecotopes with our man-made rocky landscapes are really attractive for birds like this. This is a hawk I, pi uh, I took a photograph of a couple of weeks ago in the, in the backyard of my neighbors. He is consuming a pigeon, uh, another um, sp uh, a species that adapted so well to living with us in the city and uh, enjoying life with us um, human beings. So, you all might know, have had such experience or know such uh, examples, uh, seen, su uh, seen such things, and sometimes it surprises us, sometimes it makes us happy, but also sometimes it makes us wonder, is, is, is this okay? Uh, sometimes it makes us feel sorry for them. So, how did we get this far, that animals have to roam our streets in the city, looking for food like homeless people, getting it out of garbage cans, which we also might consider, maybe ju they just like to live in the city. They like to urbanize, just like we did. And not only animals love our man-made ecotopes, these uh, uh, ferns you see over here on this wall are actually very rare ferns in the Netherlands. They are protected and endangered species. But this wall is an old building in the middle of uh, the city Delft, and uh, they just um, uh, came there spontaneously, and they love to live there. Why? Because of the mortar in, the, uh, uh, in between the bricks, it's ideal for them, so the man-made uh, circumstances are ideal for these ferns. And it's the shady side of the building, so it's nice and moistly. Um, but we're not really helping the plants. Um, they like to live with us, but we, on the other side, decide, uh, on the other hand, decide not to live with them. So in our minds, nature is mostly something which is out of the city. So we work our asses off to get gardens like this. And maybe some of you recognize your own garden in this garden, or you don't have to raise your hand, but maybe the garden of the guy next door who has a garden like this. Um, we are particularly fond of these kind of gardens in the Netherlands. So we work really hard to get the most exotic plants out of the garden center and put them in our own gardens, uh, get rid of all the things in between, and uh, we're forgetting about our own indigenous plant species, which are very well adapted to our climate. These are not. You, have to, you know that. You have to change them every year, for instance. They don't grow there very well. Um, and our own indigenous species are very well adapted to these circumstances. Well, I said we're forgetting about them, but we're not forgetting them. We exterminate them, calling them weeds. So indigenous nature is weeds. You see that over here. We have to work very hard to get rid of them. Um, I show you a picture of my own garden now. And um, what you see over here, it's a very shady garden. It's in the middle of the city, uh, five trees. So a lot, of sh a lot of shade and a lot of those corners where normally you have difficulties with to grow something nice. So what you can do is put plants over there, which like forest-like circumstances, just as over here. 
So the funny thing is, over here you can see those plants, those ferns, they are the same ferns that we saw earlier on the brick wall. These are endangered species in the Netherlands, they are protected, but the funny thing is, you can simply buy them at the right nursery. So I uh, bought a lot of them and put them over here. They do it wonderfully. It, it's, they are evergreen, so uh, in summer and winter it is this picture. Uh, and I don't have to maintain it. Why? Because they are weeds. So we, I don't have to weed. It looks like this all the time. The only thing I have to do is mow the grass. Uh, another species in my garden is this one. Uh, you see it on the left, it is the wood bed straw. Uh, a really nice white blossoming plant. You see, this is uh, the same garden. Um, and that plant is actually extinct in the Netherlands. So a lot of people worry about nature and the extinction of species. But these, this one, you can simply order on the internet. You see it on the right side. I ordered it for 5 euro 50, a mixture of indigenous uh, 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 forest species. And this one was in it, and it, it's doing it wonderfully. Um, you can also, this was a shady garden, but also in all kind of other circumstances, there are plants, indigenous plants, who do it wonderfully at that place. Who, would, who wouldn't want to have a garden like this or a park like this? So we're forget, we've been forgetting these plants and trying to get plants from all kind of parts all over the world, put it in our garden and put lots of effort on it. Lots of love, lots of money, lots of maintaining. Well, imagine if we put all those love and caring and attention in our own indigenous, indigenous species, and that fera, fera is everywhere on the world, of course, um, you see how many small natural parks we're getting, actually. So that means w us together, about 200 natural parks, everybody on the world, that means billions of natural parks. So what I'd say is, if you, wanna s if you worry about nature and the extinction of species, you might consider buying uh, a, a species which are, uh, uh, which are for sale and which are about to extinct, which are rare, which are indigenous, which you don't have to maintain so much. And it is not that they are in your garden from there, but from there they can spread over the city. You've seen that in the picture of these walls. They can spread over the city to all those dark corners where these ferns like to live, or to those very sunny places where these flowers we saw like to live. From there, they can spread over roofs, uh, uh, the balconies from your, uh, from your gardens or your balconies. They can spread over the city, and those cities will become new natur natural parks, nature areas. In that way, we can consider the city not anymore lost area for nature. No, they are just very extreme, very va varied um, nature areas, and, well, the city of tomorrow may be paradise. Thank you. <laughs>